Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about the cooling system on the Ford N-Series tractor. And really these tips are good for really any tractor or even antique car. Uh, I see this topic come up a lot in the discussion groups this time of the year. Uh, we're in the beginning part of October, the temperatures are starting to get a little bit cooler, and people are starting to test their antifreeze and wanting to change their antifreeze because they don't want it to freeze and crack the block and the, uh, rupture the radiator or whatever. And uh, a lot of questions come up repeatedly over and over again. So I wanted to make this video to talk about some of the tips and tricks and things that you need to learn to keep your Ford tractor and its cooling system in tip-top shape for years to come. So probably the most common question asked is, what coolant should I use for my Ford tractor? I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. There are a lot of coolant options out there. When you go into the auto parts store or Walmart, you, are, you see about every color of the rainbow. You got yellow, you got green, you got pink, orange, blue, anything you could possibly think of. And they all have these fancy labels on the front that say, you know, high mileage or extended life. Those types of antifreezes contain what they call OAT, which is short for organic acid technology. Those types of inhibitors are very uh, corrosive towards things like uh, brass or copper, or any kind of yellow metal for that matter. Uh, solder, it does not like solder at all. Your radiator is composed of those materials. You can uh, shorten the life of your radiator. Also, uh, gasket material, especially the gasket material that is made with like a, a silicone uh, compounds, which is most of them, it will eat away at those gaskets and you will develop leaks. So just keep it simple, look for something that says green, and look for something that says original on the label, and you'll be good to go. Okay, now that we decided on what kind of coolant to use, I want to talk about the mixing process. Okay, so you always want to have a 50-50 mixture of coolant and water. You never want straight water, you never want straight coolant. You want two equal parts, 50-50. Alright, now I know a lot of you probably already spotted, I am using what they call 50-50 pre-diluted antifreeze. Now I know you're probably saying, what an idiot, he probably is paying extra for water, which it's really not water. Now that we decided on what coolant to use, I want to talk about the mixing process. You always have to have a 50-50 mix of coolant and water. Uh, you don't want straight coolant, you don't want straight water, you want two equal parts, 50-50. Now, I know a lot of you probably already noticed, I'm using 50-50 pre-diluted. It's already mixed, it's in one jug, just pour it in, you're good to go. Now I know you're probably saying that, boy, you're an idiot. You just spent more money just for water when you can just buy concentrate and add your own a lot cheaper. Well, it's not entirely true. This is not exactly water in here, okay? And I'll explain that a little bit and I'll explain why I choose to go this route now. All right, so if you do want to use the concentrate and mix it your own, here are some things you have to consider. Do not use tap water. I don't care if it's city water or well water or from the river out back. It is full of all kind of stuff, impurities of all kind that is only going to speed up the corrosion process of your cooling system. Now for years, including myself, used distilled water. Now distilled water is good. It's way better than tap water. However, it's not the best. There is a th uh, water called deionized kind of a hard word to say, deionized water. Okay, it is used in all kinds of stuff like coolant and we got what, medical equipment, um, even car washes, that's how you get that spot free rinse. Um, window washers use it, all kinds of industrial stuff. You can even buy it by the 55 gallon drum if you wanted to. All right, now when you produce or make distilled water, it goes through a process of taking out the, the impurities, all right? The only thing is, when that happens, it basically becomes chemically imbalanced ions. And those ions are basically kind of like hungry. And what happens is, they kind of attack the metal that it's uh, in contact with. So, for example, 
uh, let's say your air engine block, the water jacket and everything, if it's cast iron, those ions are actually going to draw the ore out of the cast iron and create a rust. All right, what it's trying to do is, since it went through a process and became uh, imbalanced, it's wanting to rebalance itself. And during that process, it is going to create rust. Now, if you change your coolant frequently, I try to do it every three to five years, it's probably not going to be a major problem, all right? But time flies, and sometimes we let it go a little bit longer than what we, we want to. So I would highly suggest to get something a little bit better, like the deionized water, like you find in already the 50-50 mixture. I just find it so much easier. I think I'm getting a way better product that's not going to create corrosion, and it's just simply a lot easier to even use. I don't have to worry about anything. Just pour it in and go. There's even coolant out on the market that even goes a step further. Uh, it is actually waterless. I know of one company off the top of my head, I believe it's uh, Evans Coolant. Uh, since it does not use water, you basically don't even have to ever change it. The guys that have those fancy uh, Packards and Duesenbergs and Cords and those fancy big cars uh, of the, in the 20s and everything, those radiators on those are extremely delicate. They're very expensive to repair, complicated to repair, and they want to take care of them. That's why they go the extra route and even get that uh, waterless coolant. I don't think anybody's going to put that into their tractor. I mean, even I draw the line there. Uh, I think it's about 60 to 80 gallons, or I'm sorry, 60 to 80 dollars a gallon. So that's getting pretty crazy. But anyhow, that is why I use the 50-50 mix. Now that the lecture is over, uh, we're going to get started here. I'm going to go ahead and get prepared to uh, drain. As you saw, I went for a little bit of a ride. I like to go and get the uh, engine up to temperature, open up the thermostat so it completely drains. The manual does say that there's three gallons in there. You will not get three gallons out, I guarantee you. Uh, close, but not, not exactly three gallons. Uh, in this particular tractor, the drain plug is right under Neath the bottom of the radiator, I don't know if you can see the uh, little brass valve there, there it is. Uh, if you have a original radiator, or not all the originals, but a lot of them will have a uh, petcock right here. I actually like it when they're up front because it's easier to get to and they don't get bent up as much uh, right there. But uh, let's start draining. Now that the radiator is drained, I'm going to go ahead and open up this petcock right here on the side of the engine. That is going to drain the block, or I should say the water jacket. Uh, just a word of caution, uh, if you open that up and nothing is coming out, don't assume that it's empty. A lot of times, if you have corrosion, they will get clogged up and all you, do, all you need is just uh, like a wire and just shove it up in there and jiggle it around and it will end up getting everything flowing out alright for you. Now that everything's been completely drained, normally you'd be ready to start adding new, fresh coolant to your system. However, I just want to take this moment just to go over some of the components and give you some tips about them. I always like to check a few things before I uh, call it a day. This is your water pump. This is obviously your fan. I always like to grab it to see if there's any play. This one's brand new, so there is zero play. But if you start to get a, uh, a good bit of uh, play in this, 
you might want to think about replacing that. Not only is it going to leak, but more importantly, once that fan starts to wobble, it can damage your fan shroud, or even worse, your radiator. Also, there is a thermostat in this cooling system. You can see right up there at the tip of my finger, the uh, hose clamp, that is holding the thermostat in place. I always get asked, do I need to use a thermostat? The answer is yes. It's very crucial to the uh, health of your engine. First of all, if you don't use a thermostat, there's a lot of point, a lot of times where you won't even ever get up to operating temperature, especially in cold weather. Why is that harmful? For many reasons. You're going to get a lot of sludge build up. You're going to get a lot of carbon build up. This is all going to wear out your engine faster. Also, you're going to have an engine that's going to be heated up unevenly without a thermostat, meaning one part of the engine is going to be hotter than the other. And when that happens, you're going to have uneven wear. So yes, you always want to use a thermostat. Now, originally these tractors came with a 160 degree thermostat. You can still buy them. Why did they have them? Great question. Well, the coolant back then had alcohol in it, and anything over 160 degrees would kind of just wither away and evaporate. So now we don't have to worry about that because we simply just do not have that kind of uh, coolant available. So they do offer 180 degree. You can definitely use either or. 180 is probably even better just for the fact of all the reasons I just gave you. A hotter engine is better sometimes to a degree. I mean, naturally you don't want it over boiling. Uh, so anyhow, use a thermostat, whether it's 160 or 180, uh, uh, you know, 180 is better. This particular tractor has 160 degree in it. Only reason why, it's original, it works great, and you know me, I've talked about this before in my videos, I cringe about new parts, they're not really good. So if that old one's still working, I'm going to use it. And you can test your thermostat, go to your kitchen, get a pot of uh, water, heat it up, and just drop it down in there and you'll watch it open and close, it will close when you take it out. So that is how you test one. Make sure you test one, whether it's an old one or a brand new one, make sure you test it before you put it in. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. When you look down into the radiator, you're going to see the cooling tubes. I tried to get the camera down there. It's literally impossible. When you see those tubes down there, and you keep pouring coolant in, the moment you see that those tubes are under coolant, meaning the coolant is above them, you can stop. If you go too high on these, it will want to come out the overflow. A lot of people think, oh my goodness, my tractor is overheating. It's not overheating. It's simply pushing out what it doesn't need. Okay, it took uh, a little over two gallons, about two and a half gallons, which is expected. Uh, I'm just going to set this cap on here and I'm just going to roll the tractor outside and I'm going to start it up. I like to run it for a while without the cap on, get some heat build up. A lot of times you'll just get like a little bubble or like a, a burp get a little air pocket out of it. Uh, it's been running a while and I don't I didn't see it. Maybe I missed it. I don't know but anyhow I think we're all good here. Nothing better than a nice cruise and old Ford. Everything's running good. I did fail to mention it's always just a good idea just to uh, to check your uh, coolant with a tester as far as the uh, freezing point of it every year. Uh, but basically if you change the coolant every few years like you should, it will never get to that point anyway. So I, I very rarely check it. I just always change it. But uh, I'm going to go for a little cruise here and just uh, enjoy the night.